Hello everybody and welcome to the stream. Give me just a moment while I make sure I have everything set up here properly and we will get right into sculpting. While I make sure I have... Shush, 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 shush. Always gotta mute myself. <laughs> All right, I think we are good to go. It looks like I got the chat working. So uh, if you could, if you're joining us, type something in chat, say hello just so I know that you guys can hear me all right. And we will get into it. Uh, I have just started sculpting. Uh, my sister's golden retriever. He is absolutely adorable. His name is Weston. Uh, and I just, uh, I just today got some, some new images of him. You can see these paws over here. That's their other dog who will be next. His name is Finley. But yes, I, I've just started on this and uh, now I'm... <laughs> Uh, able to kind of do a lot more now that we have this profile image here. A profile and a three-quarter will help out a lot. All I had before was um, some straight-on photos that I ripped off of Instagram. Uh, so I've been using those. Uh, but now, now that we got some more views, hopefully this will be a lot easier for us moving forward. So I am going to... Uh, well, actually, I'm already, I'm already in Transpose Master which is just up in your Z plugin, T-Pose, Transpose Master, T-Pose Mesh. So that's what I'm using right now to work on all these sub-tools at once. Uh, and I'm gonna continue making some changes here, just some large scale changes. And then we will get back to uh, our, all of the individual sub-tools here in just a moment. We'll continue on here a little bit. Uh, Mauricio, welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Everybody over on Facebook, Twitch and um, and also on YouTube. How's everybody doing? Hope you're having a good night. Again, we are working on sculpting my sister's pupper here. Weston is his name. Being cute's his game. Also, licking is his other game. He loves to lick things. He's a lick master. But I have uh, a bunch of other images over here on my other monitor that I will be referencing. Here he is. Th this is the main, uh, or that wasn't the one that I was using before, but one, one of these here, this one. one. And this is all I had for the profile before, so I didn't really have much to go off of. But yes, he is adorable, very cute. And there's there's Finley. Like I said, he's, he's gonna be next. He's gonna be the next puppy that we sculpt. All right, let me find another reference here. And I'm going to be leading this, uh, once we get the likeness here in the profile a little bit closer, we're going to be leaning more into a stylized direction, kind of going for a little bit of that, uh, probably not quite this far with the giant eyes. Uh, I would like to increase the size of the eyes and do some other big changes here, but we'll talk more about those as we get, uh, get closer. I've already sculpted and baked in a little bit of a a little bit of a smile here as he's cheesing. He loves a smile. Yeah, we'll, we'll continue on here. And uh, as always, uh, if you're just joining us for the first time, feel free to ask any questions. No such thing as stupid questions. Um, but yeah, feel free. Feel free to just hang out. And I will try to talk through my process as I'm sculpting here as best as I can. So the main thing that we want to well, not the main thing right now, but one of the main things that we will be worrying about as we get a little bit further in is talking about some thicknesses for 3D printing, and I'll mention that a little bit later as we get closer to that. I need to make sure I don't have anything hidden here. I did have something hidden. It's freaking out on me. But uh, yeah, so main silhouette in terms of the major silhouette shapes from the front view. Uh, we're a lot closer than we were uh, this morning before we started streaming. But again, that profile is what we're aiming for next. So that's what this image and the three quarter are gonna help me out a little bit in. My perspective isn't going to be exactly the same. And again, we will be leaning closer towards that stylization as we keep going, uh, keep moving forward. Oh, we're shaping up, we're shaping up. We started from a sphere, you know, complete scratch. But, uh, you know, takes time, takes time. Sculpting is very slow. Very slow going process. The only stupid question is the question that is not asked. How, uh, how, uh, poetic of you. Maybe not poetic, but 
Sophoric? Is that, is that the correct term? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Let's hide these ears so that I can work on transitioning the uh, line of the cheekbone going back. Um, when you only have a single image or a single view that you're working from, especially with something that's covered in fur, <laughs> like a dog, uh, there are a lot of tricks that can get played on your eyes uh, just from the different colors of the fur. Find an example here. Like looking here from this front view for a lot of this, I was seeing a little bit of a plane change wrapping around from uh, coming from the uh, the snoot all the way back into the uh, pretty much zygomatic or cheekbone back here. I was getting a little bit of a plane change read there and it's a lot less visible here from the three quarter, which is why this view is so helpful. Um, and this is more so just the light and the fur uh, playing a little bit of a trick on my eyes. So it's, it's definitely difficult to figure a lot of that stuff out. So I will be planing that back with my trim dynamic quite a bit and um, knocking back a lot of this form. So if I am going to use my smooth brush, it's going to be, um, you know, very liberally. I don't, I don't want to uh, just go crazy here like that. Very easy to lose a lot of this form. So I gotta be, gotta be a little careful. Let's soften some of this and just try pinching that in. Dogs, or there's a reason that seals, seals are called the, uh, the dogs of the sea, the puppers of the sea, take off their ears from a dog and it looks almost identical to a seal in a lot of ways, in a lot of respects. So we have a lot of stuff we need to do here to get uh, closer to the likeness. So let's, let's really dig in here. And again, Hud Boy, everybody else, Jose, Julie, welcome back. And Pendragon, welcome back as well. It's been a while. How are you doing? Wouldn't the cheekbones be more pronounced? You know, I I was thinking that at first from the uh, from the front view, but uh, I think we we have a lot of um, flattening that actually needs to occur there. There's a lot of changes that actually need to happen now that I have these images. This is the first time that I've had these images. I literally just sat down right before I started the stream and uh, imported these into into ZBrush really quick. So there's going to be a lot of a lot of work we need to do here for sure. I do have more images hiding behind my face down here, um, <laughs> and I'll, I'll I'll pull up some of those in a little bit later. Uh, let's keep going here. There's definitely, uh, just in general, some thickness that we are lacking. So let's try to get that a little bit closer. This guy is, he's just got a lot of skin. He's got, <laughs> he's got a whole lot of extra skin. He is a cutie. Needs more wrinkles? We'll get there, we'll get there. <laughs> hey, Heather. Uh... He needs lots more wrinkles. He is a wrinkly boy. All right, let's get some more volume. Like I said, we need a lot more volume coming down through here. A lot of this is fur that I'm reading from that profile. But in general, just looking at the distances here, I think there's some changes that we can continue making. Let's get in here with the ear, hide that, I'll turn on double really quick, and hopefully I'll get this entire eye, let's make sure, not sure what's going on there. So this is what happens when you accidentally only mask a portion of that. Um, hmm. I'll probably just fix this later and reinsert a new sphere. I won't worry about it right now, it's just going to... I'm just gonna slow us down right now. Let's continue here. I want to change some angles. Move some more stuff around. And I'm gonna turn off perspective. Things often look very weird once you start turning off perspective, but sometimes it's just very helpful for lining some things up, especially when you're looking at orthographic views like your profile, some other stuff. Real quick here, hide this, get this tongue, and 
Let's do a quick little selection down here. I uh, Just during our last stream, I actually connected up the uh, two jaws there. It's gonna be an annoying selection, but we'll try to do this quick. Get away tongue. There we go. My pen is actually uh, somewhat broken right now. It's one of my buttons on my pen broke, unfortunately. I thought it was maybe just a driver issue at first, but it turned out that it was a hardware issue. So I've been holding my pen a little funky for the past few streams, a little bit uh, different than what I'm used to. And I'm having trouble getting used to it and just navigating in general. Normally it's not quite as difficult for me to rotate around my canvas. I'm gonna move this up and just soften this transition here just a little bit. Most of this in the front won't be seen. I have this closed off so we're not gonna get any uh, holes later on when we're uh, making sure that this is uh, any kind of print ready. Let's continue pulling down through here. Fix my masks real quick. I'm trying to keep a lot of these quick form changes fairly fairly rough and quick, but you know, sometimes you get caught up in those little details. You want to keep making changes. Uh, Damien, what's going on? Welcome. Uh, Habib, good morning. Well, not morning for me at least. T.S. Wittelbach, how are you doing? How goes the streams on your end? Let's see. Let's change some angles as we get back in the brow here. Do a quick little rough mask there. If I were to do any of these masking uh, changes from the profile, it would be um, a little bit different if I had perspective on, which is why I toggle that off, just so we don't get those weird errors through there. It's very frustrating to uh, to deal with. A couple more tweaks here. And I'm, I'm not even worried about if I screw up the shape of the eyeball now, because it's already messed up, so it doesn't, it doesn't really matter now. It's not that big of a deal. So I've already started to consider some stuff with stylization for, for our puppy. I want to get the likeness, like I said, a little bit closer than we will be really focusing in on how we can exaggerate and stylize a lot of this stuff. One of the areas where I would like to stylize him a little bit more is in his in his smile. Try to really pull that up. We'll see how far we want to push that. But we're just going to continue on here with this. Try to soften some of that just a little bit. Make sure we're getting some proper volumes through here. And this is all low res, so it's a little tough to manipulate with a, with a clay tubes brush or anything. That's all right. It's all right for this, I think. All right, quick few more strokes here. And then uh, this, this little piece of geo down here is just our collar. Let me move this up a little bit, figure out where I want to put this a little bit more. And... Let's see. I can't see, unfortunately, what the collar will look like smooth. I can only do that when I have the creases on there. I'm not actually sure if I can crease these edges in Transpose Master. I'd prefer not to do that and mess it up uh, and have to redo all these changes, though. So I will avoid uh, doing that, at least for the time being. Maybe we can try that some other time. And then, real quick, I'm just gonna T-pose back. So this will send all this information back to our subtools. Just so that all goes back and just make sure that that's working really quick. And let's do some quick adjustments here. I'm gonna do this really quick and rough. I don't wanna make this too short. Let me just play around here a little bit. Need to square off his head a little bit more. And... Alright, 
let's go back to T-Pose, to our subtools, and now once that goes all the way through there. So I'm going to need some new eyeballs, because our eyeball is now all misshapen, which is fantastic. If Oh, you know what? Actually, I can just undo back to our round eye there, so that's good. Let's just make sure, <laughs> zoom out real quick, that our bug eye boy, perfect, perfect. <laughs> let's, uh, let's push these back a little, make those adjustments again. Rotate these out, get them all goofy, bug eyed, perfect. <laughs> and I'm just going to push these in. All right, we'll rotate the eyes, we'll rotate them back just a little bit, you know. Having him a little bug-eyed is, is pretty fun. And let's just make sure that that's fitting in there properly. Turn on transparent. Turn off our perspective. And probably just rotate this down a little bit. And let's see. making sure that that's got enough room in there for the eye. Normally I would take the time to sculpt a separate eyelid, but I ended up just doing this all as one mesh. Uh, you know, it just kind of depends on what kind of mood I'm in. But uh, normally I would like take the time to split it out. It turned out uh, just fine for at least for now. But we're gonna get in here and start softening some of these form transitions where I've blocked out some harder plane changes up through a lot of these areas, which I'm sure you can notice. A lot of that's just to um, help me figure out where some of the form is changing. And it looks a little awkward at first, just because it's so such a sharp transition. But uh, it's really easy to like bevel that out later. Uh, Kushwa, welcome. How are you doing? And everybody else that is joining us on the stream, how's it going, guys? Hope you're having a good day. Anybody working on anything cool? If you uh, if you have any projects or anything you want to share, you can always feel free to post a link in chat to your art station or anything else. We love sharing work here. Uh, I will also mention uh, that this Saturday over on my Twitch channel, which I should enable my title banner, so you guys can see, uh, Twitch TV slash Folygon with an underscore at the end of it. That is my Twitch channel. Let me toggle something else here real quick. Uh, and I stream on my channel uh, every day except for Sunday at uh, noon EST. Noon EST. Uh, and on Saturdays, we've started doing uh, some live critiques. So if you guys are interested in that, you can just shoot me an email uh, to folygon at gmail.com. Just include your Twitch username or you know your name so I know who you are if you don't have a Twitch account. Uh, include your ZTool file, so tool save as. Please don't send me a ZBrush project. They're just bloated and too large and I don't want to deal with it. So please just a ZTool. And then just include some information about your, your project and your file, what you're working on, why you're working on it, and uh, specifically what you want me to critique about your, your sculpt. Uh, so that'll be this Saturday, again, at noon EST folygon at gmail.com. Send them over if you are interested. Um, it'll be a lot of fun. Last time we did it, it was the first time we did it, and it was kind of really spur of the moment. So uh, we ended up picking up uh, files while I was streaming. People were sending some stuff in. So I'm sure we'll probably get some of those again, uh, and I'll try to uh, you know spend uh, an even amount of time across all those. Depending on how many we get, we might have to push some of those back to the next week, but we shall see. We shall see. It was a lot of fun, though. I think it was uh, good, even for a lot of people that didn't send stuff in. I think just um, you know, getting getting to see other people's work get critiqued and you know, point out some things that maybe you wouldn't be able to notice is is nice. At least it's nice for me. I enjoy I enjoy having that happen, even if it's not my own work. Critique or good critique is often uh, very tough to come by. This guy's got a lot of fur bunching up around his collar, doesn't he? Let's uh, let's just turn off the collar for a little bit. I need to um, really do some stuff down here with this connection. 
And I'm probably just gonna like trim this out and start destroying some of this form so that I can start shaping this up properly. It's really hard to um, do that while I'm trying to line it up with that cylinder perfectly. It's just not working out. Being, being very annoying to deal with. Quick little, let's see, this is my lowest subdiv. I'll just do a quick like taper in here. And in terms of the uh, profile silhouette, I think I'm, I think I'm fine with the the shape that we have right now, uh, coming down to the neck. The only thing I might change is uh, make the back of the neck a little bit longer. I want to avoid this being like super top slash forward heavy um, so I would probably maybe change that a little bit and figure out where to cut this a little bit better what I do want to avoid though is getting unnecessary um, form changes in my silhouette which is something that you know it's just you know the very basics of fundamentals talking about your large primary shapes uh, you don't want any unnecessary silhouette changes you don't want anything that's going to uh, negatively impact your silhouette for what you're trying to accomplish. Which for this, we will be getting into more of that stylized appeal as we continue forward. Again, one of those things will probably be making the eyes quite a bit larger. Oh, that trim was terrible. That's all right. I'll just kind of do this manually here and probably, I'll probably like take a slice brush to this a little bit later. We'll see. up some more really quick turn perspective back on and continue softening up quite a bit of, of this here around the brow I'm using a clay tubes brush right now and a very very gentle smooth brush and I'm doing that on a lower subdiv I think that was my lowest subdiv it was not it was my second to lowest I'm just using that to um, help um, help blend that form a little bit better as I add some of that geo on there. Frank, what's going on? Uh, hello from Mexico. Hello to you as well. Hola desde Me Mexico. Uh, desde, is that from, I'm guessing? All of Mexico is saying hello. Welcome. Welcome to the stream, Mexico. How are you guys doing? All right, I think uh, I think I've I think the fur was playing a little bit of a trick on me in some of these other images, so I'm going to start getting a little bit more of uh, of some volume through here and just help to transition this a little bit better. It's it's um quite quite depressed right now, so we'll have to inflate that back out a little bit. My brush feels like it's a little strong right now. My settings are... I'm just gonna lower that a little bit. It's acting a little strange right now. Cool dog, yeah, thanks. This is my sister's golden, one of two. His name is Weston. He is totes cray cray adorbs. Uh, he, he's very cute. And he has a brother, which I will, uh, hopefully be sculpting after I'm done with this one. Right, continue to soften up a lot of that around the brow there. I want to make sure that that's planing out correctly. I'm going to get over here on this other side, a little bit easier to work on. Uh, let's see, I think we need to blend this out, think about edge quality a little bit more as we get down here, as uh, I did just get to the point where I merged down the lower portion of the mouth into the head uh, just this morning, and uh, I haven't really had time to blend a lot of this properly so we can 
we can do that. Just a lot of blending right now. Uh, a lot needs to happen around here, I think, which is not uh, not difficult. It's something we can do pretty quick. Mainly just, again, that trim dynamic. It's one of my favorite brushes that I use in tandem with a smooth brush. Smooth is just so, uh, so strong. It's so destructive, so you got to be careful with it. Uh, I definitely struggled using that brush a lot when I was, you know, in my earlier stages of sculpting. It's not really that much, it's, it's like not that big of a deal now, but if you're struggling uh, with your smooth brush and just being able to control your form, maybe try using like a trim dynamic or try lowering the Z intensity of your smooth brush. So just hold shift and, you know, click and drag that down really low. That should help you out uh, a lot, especially, uh, Especially if you're similar to someone who was in our last stream that was saying that they were sculpting with a mouse. That sounds terrible. I don't know why you would torture yourself like that. That sounds like trying to draw with a rock. <laughs> uh, if it's a golden retriever, why doesn't it retrieve gold? That's a great question. I think it's because they are golden color and they also retrieve things. <laughs> uh, he is very good at retrieving, but he's not very good at letting go. <laughs> he, he loves his... He's got this one toy. He has a red frisbee that he loves. And uh, he will go get it, you know. He's not very good at catching things, though. <laughs> He's not a golden catcher. He's not a golden snitch. Uh, but he will go get it, and he will bring it back to you, but he will not give it to you. <laughs> I think a lot of dogs are like that, though. Uh, is it possible to use only the mouse to make a model in ZBrush? Absolutely, absolutely. It'll take a lot longer uh, and it'll be a lot more painful than using uh, a pen that's gonna have pressure sensitivity on it. But yeah, you can absolutely use a mouse, you know? It's just a tool. Uh, I would say you're gonna be creating unnecessary pain for yourself a lot of, for, for a lot of that. Uh, I would highly recommend, you know, if you don't have a graphics tablet, grab like a, a, a Wacom Bamboo tablet off of Amazon. You can get one for like $60. They work great. It's the first tablet I ever used. Uh, and it, I mean, I could still use it today and be happy using it. It's a good tablet, good tablet. It's exactly the same as what you would get from an Intuos tablet, but I don't think it has any programmable keys. The pen probably isn't, uh, you know, quite as robust. It probably doesn't have uh, maybe the same amount of buttons on it. So if you're somebody that likes having a lot of programmable keys and multiple buttons on your pen, then uh, then I would recommend just grabbing an Intuos tablet. I really like the Intuos tablets a lot. They're really nice. A lot of people prefer those over uh, graphics tablets like what I'm using. Nothing wrong with those. But yes, it is. It's definitely possible to use a mouse. Would I want to do it? Absolutely not. No. Just the ability to, uh, to have pressure sensitivity on your pen to control the strength of your brushes is, is a must-have, in my opinion. Instead of me being able to sculpt like what I'm doing here to build up some form around the the neck gradually with my clay tubes brush and kind of blend some of this together. If I'm using my mouse, it's just click and only a singular strength for all of that. So I can't have uh, the scale, the size of the brush and the size of the stroke and uh, the strength of the stroke be dependent on my pen, which is very nice. So if I start making some strokes, there we go. My pen was, or my mouse was being a little weird there. That's what it's supposed to look like. So if I'm, you know, not liking this, I need to come in here and lower my Z intensity and lower my pen size and try again. Okay, that's a little bit closer, maybe not right. So I need to lower this again. It's like, oh man, this is such a back and forth, terrible, terrible process for sculpting. That sounds like that would take you forever to do. Uh, but you know, if you <laughs> if you want to try it, more power to you. Go go crazy. Go crazy. Literally, you will probably go crazy if you continue to try. 
uh, did a dog a week ago. Fun. Like I said, uh, if anybody has any any cool projects or, or work uh, or something that they're working on right now, I know a lot of people like to uh, work on their own stuff while they're watching some art streams. So if you got something cool that you're working on, feel free to share it in the chat. I'd love to check it out. See what you guys got going on. I'm going to carry this volume around here a little bit more. Through there. And start to transition that. Large trim dynamic. We got a lot of work that we need to do on this, but that's okay. Everything looks bad until it doesn't. Especially when you're starting from a sphere. Man, that's, uh, that's a long process. I feel, I feel awful for people that are traditional sculptors. Like, holy crap, staying in that stage for so long while you're just dumping on clay like or wax, whatever you're using, whatever medium you're in. I could just, I would not have the patience for that. Gosh, like, I, I could not do it. I have some monster clay in my closet back there, uh, if you guys are familiar with it, which is just a heat sensitive clay. It's it's almost like Play-Doh for adults, uh, except uh, you can get a lot higher resolution out of it. Um, it's, it's, it's nice, it's nice. I think it, I prefer working with that over, over some like water-based clay. Um, but you know, I, this is just, I love ZBrush. I love ZBrush and I love digital sculpting, especially, especially since that is my background. <laughs> I've, I've done very little traditional sculpting, but I do, I do think it's fun. It's just such a slow process. Gosh, I'm not, not cut out for it. Digital sculpting is also a slow process, just not quite as slow. It's a more of a plain change between this front and back of the ear. Maybe use some pinch brush through through this area a little bit, just to plane that out a little bit better. Looking all right, but just it's a little bit too offset there for my liking. We will obsess over every little plane change on this guy in time. little bit of pinch. Anytime you're working on something like this as well, I'll typically hide the other side so that I can only work on one at a time. It's because while I'm rotating my camera, this happens and it gets in the way and it's a little annoying, but other than that, yeah, that's not bad. Not, that, that's pretty much the only reason why I would do something like that. Let's get some more pinch through here. My pen is causing me some issues, mental issues. All right, let's see. It does look like a seal without the ears. Yeah, I think so. Luciano, welcome. Uh, I'm not sure, T.S. Whittlebach, if you are in chat or not. Let me check here on the stream. I'm not sure if you're logged in, T.S. Whittlebach, but it looks like your account is reposting every comment. I'm not sure what's going on there. You might want to check that out. Uh, Klempis. <laughs> Klempis almost sounds like Krampus. Uh... The seals are pretty much water doggos. That's what I was saying. All right, we need to uh, change the position of our eyes. I think a little bit more here. Let's see. Let's mess with our ears for just a few more seconds. And then we'll get back to the face for a little while. Using some trim dynamic here, plane this out and 
To make this really clean, what I'll probably end up doing is remeshing with polygroups, and then polygroup one side of this, essentially have this side, the inner edge, and the inside, and then uh, use that remesh with polygroups to make that edge through there extremely clean. I'll, I do that very often, remeshing with edge loop or with uh, with uh, polygroups, and then occasionally using the Z remesher guides brush can be very helpful for getting those clean separations. And I'll be showing that off here in a little bit. Let's, um, how am I gonna do this? This is just gonna blend through to the head up there. So really, I don't need to wrap that around too much more. Let's carry this all the way through, up to about there. It's probably fine. And let's just fill in this form here. getting a little bit of a weird edge here, so let me try trimming this back. Sometimes it's tough to uh, see this stuff with the material that you're using or the lighting setup that you have, so I recommend shifting your material, uh, material, or I'm sorry, shifting your light around a lot and then changing your material if you're having trouble seeing how some form is shaping up. Wyvern Jack, what is going on? Welcome back. How are you doing? It looks like our chat is maybe bugging out on us. I think somebody... I, I'm, I don't know. It's almost like it's getting auto-reposted or something on Twitch. really don't know. It's not that big of a deal, though. All right. I'm going to turn off perspective so that I can clean this up a little easier. It's really hard for me to work on stuff close up when I have perspective on, just because uh, it messes with my camera rotation a little bit, depending on where I'm grabbing something. I'm also gonna turn those off so that I can get in here a little bit closer. Show you how I would go about cleaning up something like this. It's very messy right now, right? But with a little TLC. Let's carry this through here. I just want to make sure that that's going through to the other side. This is so you guys can't see this um, what I'm talking about, but my so I mentioned earlier that my pen is like half broken right now. So I'm like sitting here trying to rotate my camera, and then it'll just bounce like that. It's very annoying. Um, I'm trying to get used to it though. I just have to hold my pen a little funky. Let's uh, reconstruct our subdivs here. And let's see. What do I want to do here? Probably just shift this back a little bit. In a lot of the other images that I have, yeah, we've kind of lost our ear silhouette. Try to get that back a little bit more. In a lot of the other images that I have, uh, his ears were pointing forward quite a bit more. We'll mess with that as we go here. Let's take a look here and just do some quick little top-down profile changes. I highly, highly, highly encourage people to look at their models from these really extreme views of uh, the like top down or bottom up view, it uh, it will tell you a lot about your surface and uh, where you need to make some changes. For instance, there are a lot of changes that I need to make to the top of this head, just how that's flowing down from the top to the jawline there. Which you can gather some of that by looking at you know your straight on view. If I'm looking at how this line here of the silhouette is flowing out, little trapezoidal. Oh my god. Are you kidding me? Did my pen break again? Okay, holy crap. I thought my pen uh, broke the other button. <laughs> I had to disable one of the buttons because um, 
it's stuck. I, I'm not I'm not sure what's going on with it. But uh, yes, this trapezoidal silhouette that we're looking at, I want to square that out a little bit more. So uh, that becomes a little bit more obvious from the top view as I can just with perspective off. That's why I have perspective off for a lot of orthographical changes. I can just see how that's starting to shape up. So much to, uh, like I said, trapezoidal. Trapezoidal, that, that's totally a word. But we do want to start squaring that off a little bit more. And we will kind of taper in a lot of these areas for the mouth. And everything looks weird when you don't have perspective on, if you're sculpting in perspective properly. So that front view, you know, as we turn on perspective, it'll make a little bit more sense. So we keep making some more changes here. Let's see. I will be, again, exaggerating a lot of that smile. Uh -oh, we got some skipped frames there. Hopefully that's not causing issues. Here's that big old cheese, it's a big smile here. So I'll probably be exaggerating this for the stylization. Again, there's a little bit of that plane change that I was catching before, but I really do think most of this is actually caused by the shadow from his ears. I think the shadow is causing a little bit of a, a little bit of um, some confusion there for me. I'm gonna try avoiding that moving forward and also try uh, getting some more volume just around the head coming down here. I do want to square it off but mainly uh, I just wanted to get away from that tapering shape that we had before a little bit more. Let me look at the top view again. Uh, came for the puns. <laughs> uh, since you mentioned lights, is there an option to attach a light source to the model so it doesn't change when you move the camera? Uh, the option that you would probably want to use for something like that, uh, if you're just doing it sculpturally, try using a matte cap material. Uh, let's see. Because a matte cap material will uh, always always be the uh, same direction. Now, I'm not sure if maybe this is what you're talking about, but uh, if you move that light around, you can't really adjust the, the lighting. Or it looks like maybe this is a, a multi, one of those uh, double or tri shaders. I'm not, I'm not exactly positive. Let me grab one of the default uh, matte caps here, which I am not a huge fan of sculpting with these. But with these, uh, you can do a lot more in terms of uh, what material you're trying to create. I prefer using just the the um, basic materials or standard materials down here. Then you have full control over your lighting setup on the fly with your little light orb here, which is up in your light menu. But that's what this material is here. This is my Folygon sculpting material. Uh, just a material that I created after you know sculpting for a while. It's very similar. Well, it's it's not similar to the basic material, but it is. A, I think it's a really good sculpting material. I do really like the basic material a lot. I think if you're new to sculpting uh, and you're looking for something good to use, use the basic material. I, I would highly recommend it. Uh, the reason why I created this material was just it's, it's a little bit uh, easier on my eyes if I'm sculpting all day every day. The basic material is a little bit too intense for me and uh, you know I just enjoy using this material a lot. I also have a like actual clay colored version that I used I used to use this one a lot but uh, I, I more so prefer just the black and white now. But yes if you are new to sculpting, Grab that, grab that basic material. It's a good one. Or, you know, use that red wax. <laughs> use that red wax material. Everybody loves to, loves to talk about red wax. Nearly spit out your coffee. Oh no. Gotta run. Keep up the awesome work. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. Have a great rest of your night.
continue to make some changes here and there. And let's do let's get a large kind of pull out here for the ear. This ear is going to be a little weird to merge down later because what I'll probably have to do is rotate this up a little bit and then merge it down because what ends up happening if I were to merge this down like this, all this information right here would just merge to the head, get stuck on there. I do not want that to happen. So to avoid that, I'm just gonna do this. Make sure this is set up correctly. And I'm not gonna merge these down yet because I want to, um, I really wanna clean these up. I said I would show you guys how I would go about doing that. Let's do that next. Because this is a very dirty mesh right now, and it's really not that difficult to clean up something like this. So, this is a little bit more of a complex shape, which makes it makes me hesitant to want to do this just because it'll be annoying. But I'm just gonna use my, my mask pen, which is just the default masking brush and just mask out this edge on top. And I would need to do this on the bottom as well if I wanted to get a super clean edge. I think I'm gonna try to get away with only doing this on the top. We'll, we'll see how it goes. This won't take very long, hopefully. A quick little mask here. And pull this around. This really doesn't need to be perfect at this stage. It doesn't need to hug this edge, like, amazingly. I just want it to be close enough that I can retain this shape once I go to remesh. So the entire reason that we're creating a mask, we're not actually using the mask for anything other than creating a polygroup. Uh, so once we have that mask in place, all we have to do is press Control w that will polygroup that surface, which is what that different color is up top. And then we can just select that. I'll turn on double so I can see backside facing polys. And then I am, I think just, I think this will be easier. So let me just get rid of all this stuff. I'll create a second polygroup down here as quickly as I can. And instead of using masking to do this, I'm going to use some quick selection brushes just because it's a little bit easier for me to just hide that that little internal edge there, that seam. So I'm using the Selection Lasso. There's also the Marquee Selection Brush. There's a Marquee Circle. There, there's a bunch of different selection brushes. I just really like the Select Lasso. I use the Select and Mask Lasso more than, more than anything else. They're good brushes. Whoops. This pen. This pen is annoying. That looks good to me. Maybe just a little extra cleanup. And then control W to polygroup that. So now we have three different polygroups. I'm just gonna run a quick Dynamesh on this. Oh, let me delete those subdivs. I am running the Dynamesh just because I want that old topology to just be completely gone. There are maybe some areas where I could clean this up but let's just very quickly show the process here. So we're gonna go into Z Remesh, turn on Keep Groups. I'm gonna set the target poly count to like 1K for something like this. It's not a very clean selection that I've done, but it should still get the job done. And we can take a look at this. So what Keep Groups is telling ZBrush, and you can see that there are some issues here for sure, but what Keep Groups is saying to ZBrush is, hey, anywhere where I have these poly groups, I want you to try try your best to uh, follow the topology along that edge. And in this case, we have gotten some edge loops because of that, but we've also gotten a lot of errors, and that's mainly because we have some pretty crappy edges in there. We might be able to like fudge this a little bit, and let's let's just see if I can group loops that really quick. Let me do a. Uh, 
one real quick. I'm just trying to very quickly make that a little bit cleaner there so we can try to just get something quick. If we wanted, I would probably take the time to uh, clean up this edge, make sure it's really nice, and then remesh it that way. Oh, we should also lower our target poly count because that was way too high, way too high. Uh, but that is much more clean, so that's good. We're heading in the right direction. We'll lower that poly count, maybe like 0.25 or something. So we'll probably get around like 500 typically. It typically goes a little bit higher, especially when you're giving it more information to follow along. So right around 500, like I said. All right, and then we can use our Z modeler brush. And I'm just going to try cleaning up and deleting some excess geometry that we don't need, necessarily need. Got some extra edge loops in here, which are fine to just delete completely. Don't need them. As long as they are perfect edge loops, which not all of them are, like the one I just clicked. So we come up around here, the surface turns awkwardly, so it's going to have trouble deleting that. And the rest of those are not going to cooperate. So I think we'll call that good enough for what we need. And what's great here is that now I can manip manipulate this low poly form and uh, just smooth it out and get something a lot more clean. So that's how I would go about cleaning up something like this ear. Let's duplicate this just so you guys can see what that old ear looked like before we cleaned it up. So that's the old ear and there is the new one. Much more clean and now I'll, all I have to do is manipulate the surface, uh, do some tweaking to get this edge a little bit nicer in here and um, yeah, not too hard. Not too hard from here, moving forward. Let me, I, I wanna keep that one, keep those undos. Continue to make some more changes here. Probably do some masking. Maybe scale this in a little. Play around with manipulating this. It's a little thin down here towards the tip of the ear. Hopefully, hopefully that's not too bad though. Clumpus, yes, this is my uh, my sister's golden retriever. She was just here in chat a little bit ago. I don't know if she's still around. She was popping in. I told her today that I was I was sculpting her golden or one of her goldens. Yeah, absolutely. Glad I could help you out. Uh, oh, you were saying it is my sister's golden. You were not asking. Yes, it is. It is my sister's pup. Let's do a quick little bevel around this edge. Try to tighten that up a little bit. Give a little bit of a harder crease there. And I'm actually going to delete this edge. And it looks a little weird on the low poly, but for the smoothed out version, it will, uh, will be a lot, a lot more clean. So this edge is a little tight, a little tight. I'm going to leave it for now and probably manually smooth it out later on. Uh, I kind of prefer doing a lot of that stuff myself instead of, you know, letting the geometry do it for, for some of these things. Sometimes you can manipulate it exactly how you want. But just, you know, going through here after I subdivide and soften that up a little bit, it'll be easy to do that later. I'm going to wait to do that though and just spend some time working this shape. Let's delete some of these unnecessary extra edge loops that are not adding anything to our silhouette. I'm just detracting from it and making the shape a lot more complex than it needs to be, which is never a good thing. Never, never, never. It's an absolute. Not necessarily. All right, and then I'm going to mirror that over to the other side and continue working this 
whole guy here a little bit more. We'll be coming back to the face in just a little bit. Uh, I should have saved this before I started streaming. I forgot to do that. That's my bad. Alright. I unfortunately do not have that old version, so I can't show you. Actually, I might. I might have lied. Maybe I do. Let me see here. Cool. Yes, I do. Let me do a quick save before I delete these. I've been having some crashes on deleting excess subtitles lately. It's been a little annoying. Let's make sure this is the correct transpose before I go forward. Symmetry on. And it looks. I love looking at, uh, especially if you're working on human characters, straight on, with uh, with perspective off, just like from an orthographic view. They always look so doofy. Uh, that's good. It's good stuff. I'm just starting to thin out that head a little bit more. Uh, I mainly was trying to get a little bit more of that roundness before and then uh, making sure that that was tapering correctly from the from the front view. Uh, it, it just started to get a little bit wide there, so I wanted to uh, rein that back in. And then uh, I, I'm not sure if I want to do this now. Let's, let's actually play with it. Uh, I would like to try scaling up our eyes just a little at first. We'll see how it goes. But uh, we will be going into more of that stylized appeal here slowly as we continue moving forward. Whenever you're going to make any scale changes across a symmetrical axis, I highly recommend that you turn on local sim because what happens is they will scale out or in from the x-axis, but if you have local symmetry turned on, they will scale in around themselves, much like just like that. So definitely a lot larger eyes. I think that's fine in terms of size. Let's maybe push it even further just to see what we can do, how far we can push some of this stuff. I like to try pushing things a little bit further than what I would normally do and then it's a little bit easier to take some of that back after you do that, after you make that change. Let's see, I think we could rotate this out a little bit more. Uh, let's see. Looks like HUD boy has to leave work, no problem. Gotta head out. And I will see you tomorrow as well on the next stream. Thanks, man. Have a good night. Uh, is it better to manually make a new model topology, like manually drawing polys, uh, or is it better to stick to your method of making mesh retopology? Uh, I mean, it's all it's all a mesh. I think you're talking about using Z remesher. Uh, it depends what you're going for. It depends what your purposes are for making your model. This is something that will more than likely just be 3D printed. Um, but, you know, if you're doing something for real time, I highly encourage you, well, if you're doing something for real time that's going to be animated, you're definitely wanna gonna, wanna gonna? You're definitely going to want to create manual topology yourself. But my background is creating uh, stuff for physical production. So a lot of what I do, we've lost a lot of volume in these ears. A lot of what I do uh, does not need uh, incredibly clean topology. So the only topology that I need is topology that gets, um, let me hold on a second. The only topology I need is topology that supports the form that I'm trying to sculpt. So in the case of these ears, you know, I can get those really low and not need to worry too much about 
making sure that these ears will be able to deform properly later on. I need to pull these ears out like a ton more. Really get this diamond silhouette here. Wanna gonna. It's my new catchphrase. That's more of the shape that I'm looking for. But again, going down to that extreme view, you know, we're getting quite a lot of terrible shape just happening through this ear. Let me see if I can tweak and adjust this. Part of being a stylized character sculptor is obsessing over shapes for as long as you can. I mean, just, just like the most simple thing, really. Like, th these ears are a pretty simple shape. Um, they're not very complex at all. But I'm gonna, I'm going to, you know, sit here and work on these for multiple streams. Just making sure that I'm getting that the correct shape that I want. I'm looking at this guy over here, so try and get more of that diamond and then that flip back. So that's what I'm working towards right now. Um, a lot of this, it's hard to do this with this low poly piece for this type of slide that I want to do. But let's see if I can actually get this to work. A little slide. Eh, kind of working. Gets a little thin through here, so this might be a really big problem area for printing. Which is why I have attempted to pull some of this in so it can gradually go through there. Let me show you, eh, you know what, I might not be able to do this. Let's see. So you can have really thin areas for 3d printing depending on what type of printing you're doing depending on if it's supported unsupported i mean there there's a lot of a lot of uh ifs and or buts there but um for the most part you know if you have something that's really tight a really tight creased area as long as it's tapering into that shape you're probably going to be fine as long as the minimum thickness isn't getting incredibly thin through here so we do have this creased edge, but I think that's rounded probably enough to where it wouldn't be an issue. We will find out later when I upload this and find out where some, some of these problem areas might be. This is around, I think, two inches right now. I'll have to double check on that. Let's get a little bit closer here in the face to some other stuff, some other points that I'm noticing. Very informative, yeah, no problem, Klimpus. Which, I love your name, by the way. All right, let's head back to our subtools. Watch all those changes occur that we just made. Love the eyes. I think we're just, <laughs> we should just keep these facing out for the rest of the stream. Here, I'll, uh, let's see. Let me do this right. If we're gonna, if we're gonna screw up these eyes, we better screw them up properly. Beautiful. <laughs> All right. And it won't be, it won't be difficult to fix those later on. You know, if you're only looking at one side, it's not that bad. Oh, he's looking up. Oh, he's looking down. But get that front view. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's continue making some more more changes. We did a similar thing with our deer. We're turning him into uh, Rudolph. Which, by the way, if you have not seen the finished render for that, I haven't shown that off on sh on this stream at least. I was showing it off on my other stream. Here's our finished uh, Great Prince of the Forest. Uh, if you are interested in watching the process for this sculpt, 
it was done in the exact same way that I'm sculpting uh, my sister's dog, starting from a sphere and sculpting everything from scratch. So uh, if you are interested in that, that's just over on my YouTube channel, just youtube.com slash Folygon, all that's over there. Uh, but yeah, he was a lot of fun to work on. He was a cool character. A lot of uh, interesting, interesting problems, especially since the character reference was um, it varied quite widely from the 1942 version up to present. A lot of different versions and variations there. These ears, or these eyes, not ears. All right. Let's see. What else, gang? What else we want to do here? I might be importing a new image in a little bit. Uh, I, I really don't like um, how tight we're getting here for this pinched area. So I want to add a little bit more volume and try to soften that form transition there. Try to fill some of this in. Uh, let's see. Do you have any tips or know some good tutorials for when you want to start sculpting faces? Uh, you know, I don't have any general tips. I think general tips are typically bad tips a lot of the time. Uh, but I do, yes, I do know some really good tutorials. <laughs> uh, I have a ton of free stuff over on my YouTube channel, uh, but if you're looking for some more professional content, uh, I don't think I've shouted out my Gumroad yet here on stream. It's just gumroad.com slash Folygon. Normally there's a link below, uh, but we're not on my stream, so I'll just paste it in chat here really fast. Uh, in this course, this is more of an advanced course, so you might want to try something a little bit more intermediate. Uh, but in this course, I go through the entire process from scratch for sculpting a stylized and appealing female face. So that's the top one there. Again, it's just gumroad.com slash Folygon. I don't think you guys can see my, uh, you guys can't even see my uh, URL bar. That's okay. But I have a ton of stuff on my Gumroad. Stuff for absolute beginners, like a quick start course to get you up and running as quick as you possibly can in ZBrush. And then I have some stuff like uh, my, my render setup that you guys can get, which is my Keyshot render setup, which is actually included in this, uh, this course up top. I have some base meshes, like a stylized character base mesh that's not loading the images. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay. There. <laughs> uh, so this was a, uh, a stylized base mesh that I made for a recent character. Uh, you can grab it for a few bucks, and then, you know, I have other mannequins and stuff. I have, like, five mannequins, I think, in this that you can get for a dollar. Yeah, five of them. Uh, but, yeah, brushes, materials, uh, all sorts of goodies. Uh, I would appreciate it if you checked it out. And uh, I think I think this would be uh, right up your alley if that's what you're looking for. Let's see, doggo. Back on our doggy boy. Just sub to the channel, by the way. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Clempus, clempa bar. Um, but yeah, you know, if if I I recommend the uh, the stuff on my Gumroad just because I put a ton more time than I into that stuff than I do on my uh, my streams and my my YouTube content. A lot of that stuff, I put a lot more time into those, and uh, I, I think it definitely shows. But uh, as I did say, free is more your way to go. YouTube slash Polygon, I have like 300 plus videos on there for tutorials and all sorts of all sorts of stuff. The whole kit and caboodle. These eyes. Now these eyes are just messing with my head. They're too doofy. We also have a lot of images on screen which um, is kind of annoying a lot of the time. Let's see here. Let's try softening this, getting rid of those strokes. And, hmm, let's try getting some more volume in here. 
and blend this out a little bit. So mainly just the clay tubes through this area. Uh, how do I want to do this lid? Let's try just blending this up. Trying to work out how I'm going to transition that a little bit nicer. Um, hmm. Yeah, definitely doing some anatomy studies. It's very helpful. A lot of uh, the anatomy practice that I recommend doing is based on, uh, you know, what kind of project you're doing. Uh, if you're new to sculpting, I very, uh, I very much discourage people trying to do a full character for their, you know, first or even second project. I think that is biting off a lot more than people can typically chew at that stage. I highly re recommend doing, you know, something that does have an, an objective end to where you can look at it and say, this looks like this thing, or it doesn't. So like sculpting an ear, for example, is a really good way where you can look up a ton of references online, or, you know, it's really easy to just take some, like, one, two, three, front, mid, and back image of your, your ear, and, your, and maybe like a top and bottom view, if you really want to go the extra mile. Uh, and then sculpt an ear. I think that's a great way to start it out. In terms of just like reading anatomy books, a lot of the time I find that not very useful. Um, what I find to be more useful is when you're sculpting something and you get to an area where you're really struggling, which in the beginning is a lot, uh, try to handle those piecemeal styles. So I have like an anatomy, or I was showing off a couple anatomy books on my stream, if you go to my Twitch channel, Twitch TV slash Polygon with the underscore at the end there, that link up above, uh, there are a couple books that I recommend in the section underneath the uh, the uh, the stream video there. So if you guys are looking for some anatomy book recommendations, that's where you can find some. But a lot of the time, it's like I'm sculpting a character and. I'm struggling with figuring out the back of the knee and I want to look up exactly, you know, how those muscles are interacting back there for your gastronemius and what it looks like when there's flesh over it. So I'll grab my couple anatomy books back here and start looking up as much as I uh, can. And then typically I have a ton of references that I can pull from as well. Go, go from there. But yeah, I, I typically find just reading general stuff to be really boring <laughs> and instead you know when you have like that objective look where you're like oh I need this right now it's like yeah, okay I can go find it definitely have some uh, books handy though it's nice to uh, have those references close by Uh, let's see. Oh man, chat is freaking out. <laughs> I don't know why we keep getting these reposts. It's being weird. Uh, let's see. Started doing uh, some classes back in October for ZBrush. Very cool. Very cool. You want to get more out of sculpting than shown in your school. You've done a weapon. Ooh. Hold on, my chat's bugging out. But yeah, start sculpting some faces. No time like the present. Oh, 
also depends if you're going for like realism, stylized, what kind of style. I love me some stylized characters, which is probably very obvious based on based on my portfolio here on ArtStation for a lot of this stuff. These were a bunch of style studies that we did last October. This this is actually that base mesh base mesh that I was showing on my Gumroad, uh, but these were a bunch of style studies that I did of just finding some people's work online and then quickly spending like maybe a couple days on each of those. We did normal Jon Snow and we actually did this one on the uh, the Pixelogic channel here. Uh, this was actually not a style study. That was uh, a stray away from that. More of a uh, a creature creature sculpt since I hadn't done a creature sculpt in a while. That was a fun one, though. But anyway, all, all that stuff is over on my YouTube channel as well, if you guys are interested in seeing those processes. Love working on stylized characters. Whoa, what is... Okay. Alright. I'm gonna fix these eyes very quickly, because they're just bugging me out. They are bugging out, but also they're bugging me out, weirding me out. I have the little pupil iris combo there, quite large right now. I want to be able to fit these in the eye socket properly. A little bit higher. I've been using a uh, soft tip on my pen, and it's kind of like oddly sticking right now. I don't know if you guys have ever used these, if you have a, uh, a Wacom pen at all, but they sometimes come with these little gray pen nibs, and they're a little bit softer. They're not like the hard black, bla uh, black plastic pen nibs, which I assume are just uh, PVC, but... Um, I don't know what, I have no idea what material this is. It, it feels like very fabric-y. I've been trying it out. I've been liking it, but it's started to, uh, maybe my screen is just <laughs> dirty or something and I need to clean it off. It's kind of starting to stick a little bit though. It's being weird. Those pen nibs last forever though. Holy crap. If you are going through pen nibs on your your uh, Wacom tablet, you are probably pressing way too hard on your uh, on your uh, tablet. Pretty hard to go through these. Trying to fit that lid around that eyeball a little bit better. And we still need to get rid of some of the volume around here which shouldn't be too hard. Uh, I'm gonna try, instead of trimming it up too much, let's just try masking and getting a little bit more of a smooth. Yeah, we'll try that out a little bit more. And then, kind of pulling up through here. easier to do from the other side because I'm right-handed. So many images. I'm trying to get a little bit of a convexity there. knock back some of this even more, I think. And this is exactly why I keep my eyelids separated a lot of the time. Just because it's easier to work on one of those, or each of those, individually. Turn our 
perspective back on too. But we are uh, much closer. Make sure I don't go over time here. I need to keep an eye on that. I am notoriously bad at keeping track of time while streaming here and sculpting. Lose track of time while sculpting very easily. Um, but we have come a long way thus far. Two hours is like nothing. I feel like I can barely do anything in two hours. I am a, I am a slow sculptor, especially uh, when streaming. Gosh, I am like two or three times slower when I stream. Um, just because I'm trying to talk about my process and everything else. But uh, we, we still have made quite a lot of progress. I loaded in the older version for this just so we could see the differences between the two. You guys can see, I'll turn off all the poly paint there. Uh, but there, uh, th at this stage, this is when I had just merged in part of the mouth and started playing with that a lot more. Now I've started to uh, knock back a lot of that um, garbage that we had. <laughs> I call it garbage because it kind of was. And then I've started to clean up a lot of the plane changes that I initially put in there. I have a lot of these like hard planar changes. But um, yeah, we're starting to clean up a lot of that, starting to get more into that stylized appeal. And we're gonna keep heading that direction. But let's see, make sure I didn't miss anything here in chat. Yes, I am looking at real dog photos for uh, for this. Because um, I wanted to at least capture a lot of that likeness at first. And we will still continue to capture a lot of that likeness as we move forward. Make sure I didn't miss anything else here. Uh, I missed a lot. <laughs> um... Yes, basics are definitely applicable in any environment, for sure. Definitely, like, a, a lot of sculptural stuff that you learn in ZBrush. If there ever is, you know, that next big thing or Pixelogic says, here's the new version of whatever ZBrush will be, um, you know, and the UI is completely different and everything's different, a lot of that information is going to be transferable in terms of just sculptural techniques that you're going to be using. Uh, your teacher said it doesn't matter if you want to make stylized or realistic, you should always start by drawing from real life, uh, which you can see from every angle with your own eyes. Yeah, I think drawing is definitely, definitely helpful, and I think there's a lot of transferable stuff between drawing and sculpting, but uh, the best way to get better at sculpting is to sculpt. Uh, Shank says, I hate to ask stuff like this, but would you be willing to give some feedback on a dagger that I made for a school assignment uh, a month or so ago? Absolutely. Um, not right now, but uh, I mentioned this earlier and it looks like there's some more people here in stream now. Uh, so I'll mention it again. This coming Saturday over on my Twitch channel, which is, there's a link somewhere here at the top of my stream where my mouse is swimming around Twitch TV slash Polygon with an underscore at the end uh, on Saturday at noon EST, I'm doing a live critique uh, video. So if you guys want to get your stuff on that, just email it to me. It's folygon at gmail.com. Uh, include a Z tool of your file, obviously, so I can do a sculpt over or at least look at your file on the stream. Include your Twitch or whatever username so that I uh, know who you are. And then just include some information about what you want me to look at. Uh, why you're making it, what it's for, uh, and try to be as specific as you can with what you want me to critique on your your object or your sculpt or your character or whatever, whatever it is. Uh, and... Da -da 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 -da. Uh, yes, yes I will. Cool. Hopefully that chat isn't bothering you. I don't think that's a bot. I'm pretty sure that's TS Whittlebox account. That's freaking out. Not sure what's going on. We're about to head back into Transpose, Master. So 
that I can change some stuff around here. Let's grab our AccuCurve. Whoopsie! Don't do that nearly as often as I used to. I think we're going to make these eyeballs a lot larger in the socket. I'm going to try to take some notes on my eyes that I would normally do with my stylized characters, for stylized human characters, for eyelid order some other stuff. All right, let's try scaling these eyeballs up a little bit. If you're working on stylized characters, or typically for stylized characters, your eyes end up much larger than what you would probably think. Oftentimes, if you're working on a stylized human character, the eyeballs are going to touch on the inside of the head just because they're going to end up uh, being so large. It's very common, especially if you're doing like an anime style character or a Disney style character. It's very often the case. Let's make our little pupil iris combo here smaller. Since I'm scaling up the size of that eyeball just to make it fit in the socket a little bit better. Uh, you're you're making a Labrador. Awesome. They're very uh, similar breeds in terms of uh, facial shape, facial structure. Go on back to T pose. Uh, is this model made with specific method of 3D printing? It is not made with a specific method for 3D printing, but it is sculpted with that in mind. Absolutely. If you guys are interested in 3D printing, I have, uh, let me know and I can link you guys to a video over on my channel where I talk about setting stuff up for uh, depending on if you're what you're interested in, I have a bunch of these down on my desk. My uh, full color sandstone prints. Here, I'll turn on the face cam. I end up pulling these up on just about every stream, just because people uh, often ask about 3D printing. But uh, this is my Pikachu plus Totoro fusion, obviously, if you can't tell by looking at them. Uh, but I have a ton of these down on my desk. I even actually have my little uh, my little Folygon guy here that I have as my little profile icon printed as a little cube, little chiclet. <laughs> uh, I have a ton, a ton of little uh, full color prints down here on my desk. But yes, I'm very experienced in uh, 3D printing for FDM, SLA, and SLS. Um, so if you guys have any questions about that kind of stuff, uh, like I said, this isn't made with that, with a 3D printing method. Um, it doesn't, it's not really a thing but it is made with, uh, with that in mind. I will be doing specific things like uh, setting this up for 3D printing later, but because of the way I'm sculpting this, a lot of that will be kind of already done for me. There won't be a lot of work to make this like watertight or anything like that. A lot of that, a lot of that will just be inherently already done by the way I sculpted, which is nice, very nice. I like to get that out of the way early if we can let's see trying to move those eyes a little bit closer together a lot of stuff was just looking a little bit too wide in our head 
And let's check out some stuff in the front view here. Grab our cutie, cutie here. Let's see. I can try pulling up the top corner of the eyes of the brow inward a little bit more and start getting that a little bit more uh, uh, depth through here, rolling through back through the head. I think his eyes are a lot smaller, obviously. We can maybe get some more volume in the in the schnoz. And I think there are still some changes in the ears that I would like to make before um, before moving out of transpose here. Let's do that first since that will be the easiest change. I have Accu Curve on for some reason. Don't want that. So for instance, thinking about 3D printing, since uh, you were asking about that, um, like for these ears, these ears get very thin. So for the most part, I'm keeping the ears stuck to the head so that later on there won't be any thickness issues for most of the, the ear here. I might have to thicken up the bottom portion of the ear so that we don't have this lower point here. We don't want that to snap off, so I might be drafting a little bit of that back. We'll see how how thin that actually ends up being towards the end. I think I think it'll be fine though. We'll we'll find out a little bit later. So again, pulling in I think on that inner brow corner, as I mentioned, and then also getting some more depth through here. I'm gonna get the depth outside of transpose though, because I, I think it'll be easier to do with subdivs. Yes, let's pull those eyes in. I think that's a good change. And let's pull some of this form down. Get this blending nicely through here. Um. Right, some parts are a little bit too thin for 3D printing in the ears uh, and maybe in the tongue, but I'll be probably doing some drafting on on that, so it shouldn't shouldn't really be a problem. Uh, no, it wouldn't it, it wouldn't be too thin or complex to print on a home 3D printer. Uh, I don't know what you mean by home 3D printer, but uh, you know, probably FDM is probably what you're thinking. Um, no, I don't. I don't think there would be any issues. It just it just depends completely on what scale I print this at, which right now is about two inches. It shouldn't be, should not be an issue. So I wanted to dig in a little bit there and then use that to transition through here. Whoops. So a little sharp. Let's soften that. Starting to get that a little bit better. Let's get a little more in here. Move my light. And those eyes are definitely feeling a lot better now that I've kind of moved those closer. Let's see. Hmm. Trying to get a little bit more of that that flow here. Coming down and flowing into the schnoot. 
the schnoot, the schnoz, the the schnauzer. I guess schnauzer is just an actual dog breed, isn't it? Try pinching through there a little bit. All right, and I think there's quite a bit of more uh, quite a bit more volume we can get through our uh, through our mouth in general. Like I said, he's got a lot of extra skin. <laughs> he could fit like two dogs inside of Weston. He's a cutie. Let's see. Trying to make a decent selection here, but perspective has struck again and messed us up. It's okay. Luckily, the mask lasso is very quick for these types of selections. Right. Soften that mask just a little bit. And I'm actually going to use the inflate brush, or if I select that correctly. I don't use the inflate brush too often because I think it's a little strong, which it is. Let's lower the settings on that. And I'm going to start inflating around this area. Oftentimes, I'll just use my move brush for this kind of stuff, too. And I'm using Lazy Mouse with this, just so I can get a nice, clean stroke. And I think I might want to get a little bit more volume down here, just so it's not a flat going up into that crease. That feels a little awkward to me. So we're definitely starting to get more into that stylized direction here. And I want to make sure that it still feels like Weston still feels like the same dog, still looks like him. Which is why a lot of what I did, or at least early on for this, make sure that didn't stick to the canvas. A lot of what I did early on for this was just, you know, making sure that I was getting some of these landmarks, and now I've started to scale up the eyes and do some stuff. And we start to lose that character when we, when we start to head in that direction more. So I'm trying to, uh, trying to find the balance for that as we push forward. But we're probably going to be working on this at least for the next day tomorrow on my stream. If you guys are around, that'll be at noon EST up on twitch.tv slash polygon. I stream every day on my uh, my Twitch channel, except for Sunday at noon, noon EST. And then I stream here on Tuesdays, every, uh, every Tuesday at 6 p.m. EST. Trying to do a little bit more of that. Let's see. And try using my Pinch Plus Damn Standard Brush, the MAH Cut Brush. It's a really nice brush. You can uh, grab it from the Pixelogic channel, or not channel, website, pixelogic.com. They have a resources page, uh, and that is where I grabbed it. It's a great, great little brush. There's, uh, I believe that there are two or three of them. I, I just like this one. 
they do just about the same thing. But essentially it's a damn standard pinch brush combination. It's a good way to think about it. I answered without looking at your question? Oh no. Is there some important tip to keep in mind when uh, making a model for 3D printing that is not mentioned in tutorials? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, there are a lot of important things to keep in mind when doing stuff for 3D printing. Um, a lot of the time, there's I, I don't have very simple, easy answers for people. Um, I mentioned earlier that I think a lot of general advice is kind of bad advice. It always depends on, you know, the situation at hand. Obviously, just keeping things watertight. Know what scale you're printing at. If you're printing at FDM, there's a lot you gotta keep in. I mean, there's a, there's just a lot. There's no. I am not. Unfortunately, I am not Weight Watchers. I do not have a, a quick and easy scam to sell you. <laughs> not that Weight Watchers is a scam, but. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot. Like I said, I don't like general advice because I feel like it falls into that category of, um, hey, I'm trying to sculpt something and how do I do it? Well, with this quick, easy five-step program, you can do it too. Which is why when I, whenever I promote any of my stuff on Gumroad for my tutorials and courses, you know, I, I'm never going to say, buy this course and you'll be just as good as me or twice as twice as good at sculpting as me. Because the only one who can, you know, make you sculpt better is, is you. Um, you know, you're not going to... If you buy a course and you become a, a master sculptor overnight, tell me. Tell me where that course is, please. <laughs> uh, because it doesn't exist. Um, yeah, I, uh, I, I think... A lot of that stuff falls into the, you know, it's the next next diet trend, right? Well, everybody knows deep down that the secret to getting good at anything is, you know, practice it and study and practice it some more. Just like uh, if you want to get healthier, you know, eat better and exercise, right? That's that is the secret formula. So like even with three D printing, I can't say. Here's that one thing, these five things, X number of things that you should keep in mind. Because I don't think there, there is, you know. I think there's a lot that you got to keep in mind. And, it, and it's always so dependent, of course. Always so dependent on what you're, what you're doing. But yes, I, I, don't, I don't like that kind of... Uh, um, idea where it's like this, this one thing is gonna make you, make you better, or help you out. Here, here's the one thing that will actually make you better. <laughs> no, I don't have one thing. If you're new and you're starting out sculpting, get that mileage in. Get that mileage in as quick as you can, and stop worrying about your stuff being, uh, being poop because it probably is. It, it most likely is. Actually, I can almost guarantee that it is. Everybody started off in the same place, you know, making, making poop sandwiches. I think I first heard about this from John, John Troy Nickel, who I'm sure you guys are familiar with. I has toys, John and Lena. Uh, I remember in one of their, one of their character art podcasts, I think is where I heard it. They were talking about the poop sandwich analogy, which is uh, instead of worrying about making your stuff better, start worrying about making your stuff less poopy, less bad. Because when you start off, you're making a lot of poop sandwiches. Eventually, you will get to the point where your sandwiches will have less and less poop on it. So instead of bread, turd, bread, eventually you'll get rid of all that poop and your sculpts will you know, be at the quality of just two slices of bread. It's not much of a sandwich, but you know, 
it's getting there and eventually you will get to a point where you start messing around with ingredients right you're putting on some some meat on that sandwich or something else you know if you still have just bread and turkey that's not much of a sandwich but eventually eventually you will get better it's all about mileage early on get that quantity out there quantity 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 Whoa. what what do we got I got a throat that is crying for water. That's what I got. Uh, it all depends. Uh, I, gr I agree that it all depends, but I find your stream very informative. Yeah, well, I try to I try to just talk about my process while I'm sculpting, which is why I sculpt so slow. I'm also just kind of a slow sculptor, I think. But <laughs> Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Best way to learn, hands-on approach. I think it's one of the best ways for sure, for sure. I think our nose is sticking out a little far now. I also think some of our forms are getting a little ugly. Let's try adjusting this a little bit. And there is some geometry that's poking through there. I'm not going to worry about that right now. I will blend this out later. I'm actually just going to round this out. It's going to stick through the nose even more, but it'll be fine. Be able to adjust it later. You can see how that's blowing up through there. I want to line this up a little bit nicer than what I have it currently. And then I'll just mask off that inner portion and um, just like pull that in, fade it out or whatever. It is the time of night where my contact lenses start drying up on me, and I cannot see. Uh, all right, that's a little bit better. Again, I'll have to probably just use my mask less. So let's see, transparency. Yeah, I'll, I'll mess with that later. I'm just going to leave that for now because I'm sure it'll change again later and then I'll just have to redo it again. So why, uh, why create more work for myself? Let's also work on that profile real quick here because we're getting close to the end of our time together. And this is something that has been bothering me for a little bit. bit more Just trying to get that top lip to pretty much be the only thing that's visible from that profile up to that point I'm just kind of tapering and pushing that up in there with my move brush we're also getting very flat through here I had like two folds coming down before, but I ended up removing those because they looked really awkward. So I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do with that area through here. Maybe just round this back out. I think I'm probably, I had this image up earlier. Let me see, where is it? Uh, this one. I'm probably not going to go this far into stylization with the extremely large eyes. If I make the eyes larger than they are now, uh, it won't be too much larger, but um, I do want to work on getting that, you know, really clean silhouette, try to get something really nice, something really appealing. So we'll play around with it, but um, there's obviously some like very humanistic qualities to these characters 
with the uh, the front plane of the face through here. Very common to see see that kind of thing done to these Disney style characters. So I don't know if we'll take it that far in terms of um, stylization. We we will see. We will see. I want to keep a little bit of the the character in there. And we've stra uh, we strayed pretty far from that right now, but we'll we're working to get some of that back in as we keep going. Let's clean this up some more. Um let's grab our let's see clip, I believe. Perspective is going to make that freak out. Try that one more time. Here, I'm just going to I'm just going to slice it. Have an open face. Grab my collar here from earlier and realign this. I do have some poly paint on some of this stuff. Poly paint is very nice for obviously adding color, but uh, helping figure out proportions for your character. I often recommend trying to, when you're sculpting a character, try to get all the parts and pieces in there as quick as you can. And then if you're having trouble figuring out a lot of stuff with proportions, uh, I find that poly paint is a very helpful helpful tool for figuring out a lot of that stuff. So if you're working on a human character, try to get those eyebrows, those eyelashes, paint up your eyes really quick. All that stuff will help you figure out your eye area, typically a lot faster. All right. Well, we only have a little bit of time left, so I think I'll very quickly do a once over here. Actually, let's let's just take the time to uh, compare from where we started to where we are now. We definitely have a long way to go still, but we've made a lot of progress uh, in just a short amount of time here tonight. So this is, let me quick save that out. And just very quickly save out a new version of this. Uh, so this is, uh, not this one, uh, this one is where I started tonight. So this was, you know, we're still in that early stage when I started. Uh, we're trying to plane out a lot of these, these edges in the face to figure out where this stuff is happening. That's why we have these sharp edges going on in a lot of these places. Help figure out that stuff. I'll, we'll turn off poly paint for all of that. So that's where we started on our stream tonight. And these are a lot of the changes that I made. So I've softened a lot of this. I've started uh, using a lot of the um, a lot of the landmarks that I still had. We did correct a lot of these things that uh, before I only had that single front view to work off of. So I was exaggerating a lot of that from the front view for figuring out the smile and everything else. But uh, we're still going to keep that smile in there. That's going to be baked in for the final print. Um, but yeah, we've made a lot of progress, a lot of softening of the form. We're going to continue doing that, continue working on the uh, stylization and appeal, pushing all that a little bit further each, each pass we make on this. But I want to thank you guys for coming and hanging out. I don't think there are any uh, last minute questions here in chat. Let's see. Looking at bad things can be helpful to uh, so you can critique. I think, yeah, I think critiquing in general can be very helpful. Looking at bad or good uh, and just trying to figure out ways that you can improve upon things. Definitely very helpful. I, I agree. Uh, but yeah, I think that's all for tonight, guys. So the last thing that I will shout out here very quickly is uh, in the next hour, uh, Jose is going to uh, be streaming here on the uh, the Pixelogic channel. 
uh, and they are doing uh, a pass the sculpt still. I don't I don't know if they're still on the same uh, model. It's Jose and who is it? Oscar Oscar Trejo. That's right. Uh, so definitely check that out. That's going to be on in the next hour. And uh, I will one last time shout out uh, my stuff. There's a link up here to my Twitch channel. It's just Twitch TV slash Folygon. Honestly, just Google Folygon and you'll find all my stuff. You can find my Gumroad for my tutorials. Uh, you'll find my art station probably in my YouTube channel. Those will probably be the first uh, first few hits. But make sure you guys click uh, click follow, subscri subscribe, or whatever, wherever you are for the uh, Pixelogic channel here. And uh, I thank you guys again for coming and hanging out. I hope to see you either next Tuesday uh, here on the Pixelogic channel. Again, I stream every Tuesday at 6 p.m. EST. And then I stream over on my Twitch channel every day at noon EST. So maybe I'll see you guys tomorrow morning for me. All right. I will catch you guys next time. And uh, have a great rest of your night. See you guys.